sobriety is a really funny thing because what happens when you get sober is life gets really boring <laughs> and what happens when life gets really boring is you start looking for ways to improve your life. You start looking for excitement. And you start not accepting things the way they are anymore, being mundane and common. You start setting bigger goals. You start having more desire to achieve things. Everything was fine and cool while you were drunk or high. All those things aren't fine or cool anymore. Now they're boring. Now they're too easy to get. So... You start setting your goals higher. What happens when you set your goals higher? You, you start living. You start experiencing all these things that you didn't even really have any interest in before. And what happens when you start setting your goals higher? You start failing a lot more. You start learning a lot more. You start getting more passionate about things. You start working harder. You start getting attracted to more people doing the same things. Like people attract like common tastes. You start getting surrounded with people that have bigger goals, bigger ambitions. And one by one you start achieving these bigger goals. And you feel more confident. You feel more alive. And these little accomplishments add up. And what happens when you accomplish things? Now you have this sense of ability, the sense of confidence, the sense of capability what happens when you have that people get attracted to you people come to you whether it's for relationships or work or whatever you just have this vibe this confidence this this uh, happiness and what happens when that happens you start getting addicted to that. It's a brand new addiction. You have this clarity and this perspective. And the more you're going up and down while gradually going up and up and up, building and building to these bigger goals, you start having an appreciation for other people's struggles. You start having an appreciation for how much hard work everyone else around you is doing that you were not even aware of when you were drunk or high. You couldn't see it, you couldn't appreciate it, you didn't care. And so you weren't able to experience any of it and you weren't able to enjoy any of it or gain anything from it. But now that, now that you're working with them, it gives you this whole new appreciation for life. It gives you this whole new appreciation for your own talents and skills. You didn't even know you had. I didn't even know I had. You know, you, you start getting bored and having to do things just to fill your time. And suddenly you realize, I, I just achieved all these things. That's incredible. 
And all these people want to be around me now. All these people are inspired by me. How is that possible? All of a sudden, people are seeing that I can do all these amazing things. I had no idea I could do. I was just so bored. I wasn't going to sit around doing nothing. So I just started doing things I was fascinated by. And I discovered out all these skills. And what happens then? You get bored by the little accomplishments. You set bigger goals. You walk through the door with more confidence and you know I can achieve all that little stuff I've been working on. Now do something bigger. And more importantly, now you're surrounded by motivated, hardworking, successful people. And you relate to them. And you see what they do and you're like, I can do that. Maybe that's so much better. You know, whereas a year ago, I would have looked at something and been so intimidated by it and not had a clue how to do it, no idea how to do it, and no real ambition to do it. Now I've accomplished all these things. When I set a bigger goal, even if it's still intimidating, all those people that I'm now surrounded by, by putting myself in these new situations, I'm watching them achieve those goals too. So it makes it so easy for me to achieve. Even if I didn't know how to do it, I can watch what they do and see what they do to succeed and fail. You learn from both of those things. Whether you want to be a rocket scientist, whether you want to own a restaurant, whether you want to be a Wall Street broker, whether you want to be a multi-billionaire, want to be a stockbroker, want to be whatever. Going from zero to a hundred seems impossible because it is you have to go to two you have to go to three four five six seven the thing of it is is that before you ever try it it just seems like so much work and it seems like such a pain but once you start doing it instead of looking to a hundred you're just looking at two I'm just trying to go from one to two today Suddenly, two gets so easy, and you wake up and you realize, oh, I went to four, I went to five, I went to six. I accomplished all these things. And suddenly, a week goes by, and you're at 10, 15, 20. It flies by. At that point, it's all about connecting the dots, connecting the numbers, making sure you don't skip steps, making sure you don't backtrack. But with that sobriety and that boredom, (laughs) it's fuel. It's inspiration. It gives you an alternative. When you're anesthetizing yourself with drugs and alcohol, you have no alternative to boredom. Because you're never bored. You're just drunk. You're high. You have some clarity, you realize you're not going anywhere. You're just sitting there drinking, getting high, and going nowhere. And nothing in your life is changing. But you feel fine about it. Nothing's a problem. Because you're you're killing any of your senses. Sense of smell, sense of thought, sense of taste, sense of touch, sense of pleasure... You're not getting any of the warning signs that life gives because you're out of it. And like everybody that drinks and does drugs, suddenly you get smacked in the face with it. You wake up so hungover, you have these huge fights with people, you get hurt, you hurt other people, you have all these tragic things happen. But then as soon as you get drunk or high again, None of that exists. You don't feel it. You don't think it. It doesn't exist. But then those terrible days start coming more and more frequently. And if you're lucky enough, you get a huge wake-up call that shocks you into awareness. A lot of people don't get that. A lot of people die. And they don't get the good fortune of that wake-up call. But... If you're lucky, you get that wake-up call, and you get that chance, and it might be the only chance you get to actually clearly see. 
And that's when you have to make a decision in this life. It's easy to have another drink and do drugs. It's easy. But look at it this way. Death is going to come soon enough and everything will be so blissful and so relaxed. You're not going to struggle and be in pain and things like that forever. It's temporary. This life is temporary. So, since you're going to have an eternity of peace and relaxation, why not make this life incredible? You always have that to fall back on. That, you know, one day you're just going to relax and go to die and relax and, and it's all peace. So, you don't have to worry that something you do today is going to put you in this permanent misery. So you're free. Everything that you do when you're sober, it's temporary. You get to experience everything in a safety zone. Life is a safety zone. Life is exactly the same as a dream. A dream you can do anything in, there's no consequence, and you wake up. That's what life is. You can do anything, and when it's all done, you're going to die, and you're totally free. You're going to be totally free, and all the, the tough stuff that you went through is going to be gone, and you're going to be in total peace. So when you look at it that way, it starts putting so much value on life, and it starts taking away all of the weight and all of the fears and all of the paralyzing phobias that we all have thinking that things are so intense and so permanent and I'm going to be suffering forever if I do this or if I choose to do this. When the fact is that we're choosing to suffer by anesthetizing ourselves temporarily, we're making the whole rest of our lives suffer. It's a total illusion. You try to get pleasure and drug, you know, feeling of euphoria and get out of it and things. Now, you're putting yourself into misery in the long run. If you stay sober and quote unquote suffer through a short amount of days, building that foundation, building that, all of it. Use boredom and use frustration and use angst and use poverty and use feeling the pain and coming to terms with it. Use all that as fuel. It's fuel. It's inspiration. Anything that makes you change who you are today is a great thing. It's a motivator. It's a motivator that gets you out the door every morning and makes you go, you know what? I want more with my life. I don't know if I'm that talented. I don't know if anybody's going to give me a chance. I don't know if I'm going to come back home and be unhappy and in a worse off situation. But all I do know is that I'm so miserable right now that I don't have any choice but to go out there and make all the effort I can to get some sort of relief, some sort of success, some sort of knowledge, something. And you just walk out your door with that mind frame of searching for something better. And you back that up with, no matter what, I'm not going to do the same things that got me where I'm at today. So I want something better. A drink would make me feel better temporarily, but I'm not going to do that because I know it's a mistake. And you just keep those two thoughts all day long for a short amount of time. And what happens is, while you're searching, you start experiencing these hardships and things, but you start learning from it. You start doing a crappy day job but you start making a little money. You start wanting to drink, but you choose not to. It's miserable for a day or two or three, 
then you realize, oh, I've gone three days without it. I don't really need it. Well, it still sucks, but I'm going to keep going. And then you go do more job stuff. And week after week goes by. And you start to see these little successes of somebody saying, hey, you did a really good job today. And you realize, wow, nobody ever said that when I was drunk and high. I did a good job today? Really? How's that possible? And then somebody says it again. And then you start to see competition. Somebody coming in for that day job that you hated. And they might get it. And they might get your job. So you start doing better. And then you see more competition of people working with you that are getting raises. And they're getting more money. Or they're moving on to better jobs that you know you can do. Because you see them. And you see that they suck. But you know you can do these things. So then you start trying. And then when you try, you succeed or fail. And if you fail, you see why somebody else succeeded. And then you try again. And then you succeed. And then you look and you say, wow. That's so crazy. A year ago, I never would have known how to do that. I wouldn't have known how to program a computer. I wouldn't have known how to fix a car. I wouldn't have known how to design interior design. I wouldn't have known how to mow a lawn and and plant crops. I wouldn't have known how to build a house. Now I do. And you know what? I'm tired of making other people rich. I'm tired of doing these jobs for other people. I'm going to work for another year or two and get this job on my resume and get a good review and learn all the ins and outs so that nobody can do a better job than me. And then in a year or two, you know that business and industry better than anybody else or as well as anybody else. And you start to have all those relationships with all those people that you've worked for. You start to build a house, you you go to the investor and say, hey, I know how to build a house in and out. I just found this property. Let's get a couple partners and invest in a project, do it ourselves. And they say, no way. And you work a while more and you save some more money and you get some more partners and you say the same thing. And then they say, yeah, you know what, let's do it. And you build a house. Or you build a coffee shop. Or you build a McDonald's or you build a car or fix a car build a car mechanic shop or you build a recording studio or you fill an art gallery with your art It applies to any industry. It applies to whatever you're interested in. Or it applies to if you don't have a clue what you're doing, you just go get a day job and you start really quickly learning what you don't want to do. And then you keep working until you start to see, but I kind of do like this and I I am kind of natural at this and people do compliment me when I do this. It's not an overnight thing. But it feels like it. Once you start succeeding after a couple of years, it feels like that was such a drop in the hat. And all that time that flew by drinking and doing drugs, it starts going at the same speed that that did. Where it was just effortless and just flew by. All of a sudden, you get a rhythm. I don't know how it's always guaranteed, but it's it's guaranteed with everybody. Just get this rhythm where you start getting confident. Everybody else can see it and they want to work with you. They want to be around you. The fact is, though, it gets me back to the beginning point. You can't do any of this if you're blind to your senses. If you're not getting all that feedback from the universe and life telling you, wake up this is not a good place to live this is not a good job to have this is not a good relationship to be in if you're drunk and high you're not experiencing those warning signs you think you are you're like wow i hate this house you know what? let's get drunk whatever wow my boyfriend or my girlfriend 
I'm really bad. I probably could do better, but it's so embarrassing. I'm throwing up every night, and they're taking care of me, so I can't do any better than that. They're buying my drinks for me. I can't do any better than that. Why would I even try to break up? They're covering my bills. I can't pay rent. They're paying my rent for me. They must love me. You start getting into all these traps because you're making the wrong choices. And then you start justifying your choices and you start supporting your situation by saying, well, this must be the best job I could get. My job, my boss hasn't fired me. So now I need to be loyal to them because I've been sloppy drunk on the job and they haven't fired me. So I'm going to stay and keep doing a good job for them because I owe them. Or I haven't paid rent in two months. My boyfriend or girlfriend is paying it for me. It's okay that they're beating me and it's okay that we're not going anywhere in our lives and our relationship. It's a bad relationship because I probably couldn't do better. And I mean, look, they're, I'm walking in drunk all the time, so they must love me and I owe it to them to stay with them. All of these are wrong. All of these are you going down the wrong path and then having to make all these excuses for why it's the right path or making all these excuses of why you have to stay on that path. And then you start drinking and doing drugs in order to deal with the reality that you put yourself in. And escape the reality temporarily that you put yourself in. Until, like I said, you have the big wake-up call. You get in a wreck, or you lose your job, or they cut you off and break up with you, or sometimes it's not even that shocking. Sometimes it's just a hungover day. You hit your breaking point. You just can't take it and you suddenly you have a moment of clarity and you realize, I don't want to live this life anymore. And the hardest thing to change is being in total unknowing of what's around you. You don't know how to change. You don't know how to get a new job. You don't know how to find a new house or place to live. You don't have any money. You don't have enough inspiration or confidence to change everything in your life and it's not until that point where you just get so fed up you cannot live another day like this anymore it has to be done nobody can convince you of it Nobody can take you to some sobriety place and show you. I mean, you can drop in on some AA meeting or something and get a great awareness of what other people are talking about and what other people are going through so you can start to connect the dots and see, oh, well, I didn't think it was that bad, but yeah, it's really bad when they describe the same thing. When it happens to them, wow, I feel terrible for them. Oh, wait, that happens to me all the time. It doesn't seem like a big deal when it happened to me, but good God, when I see it happen to somebody else, I would never, I would never let my mom do that. I would never let my sister do that. I would never let the person I love go through that. Why do I think it's okay for me to go through that? And it's all these little brief moments for a lot of us until smack you just have that epiphany and that wake up if you're lucky enough and you make the decision and you pray to whatever your higher power is God or whatever you want to believe is your higher power, please help me change everything. I don't know how to do it, but I know I have to.
I don't want to waste another moment of my life or another day of my life being embarrassed about who I am, being embarrassed about where I am, being embarrassed about what I've done, being embarrassed about all the failure, all the blindness. I'm not making any more excuses and I'm not accepting any more passiveness. I'm not going to be an observer of my own life. I have all the power to make all the right decisions. And from now on, I'm going to take each decision one by one with open eyes and realize I have all the power. I have all the strength. I don't know what the answers are yet. But I'm going to step one foot in front of the other, making the right choice each day as each choice comes to me. Once you have that perspective, that mixed with the ingredient of boredom, <laughs> sobriety and boredom, it's like the rule of life. Whenever there's a, there's a hole, something has to go and fill it. If there's a void, it has to be filled with something. If you move a pocket, air has to fill it. If you move a substance around water, water has to go fill it. So suddenly when you get bored, you just naturally move towards filling that boredom. And just naturally as a human being, you fill it with things that you want. But you have to first have that void. And if you're drinking and doing drugs, you don't have that void. You don't know that you have it and you don't fill it. But once you take the time to go through a little bit of that rough pain of feeling lonely, of feeling disappointed, of feeling depressed, of feeling like something's missing. The universe and everything just starts filling in that stuff with success and work, meeting the right people, accomplishing what you want. confidence and suddenly you have a perspective you have a map you can see clearly where you're going what you want you start climbing the ladder to where you want to be going on the rails in the, the straight direction to where you want even if you don't know specifically what you want you're, you're just automatically led in the right direction to success. The variables can change of what you want. You want to help people. You want a mansion. You want a good business. You want a good relationship, whatever. It's all in the same direction. Just like you don't care what you want. You don't care who's around you. You're going to do drugs. You're going to drink. You're going to blah, 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 blah. All that's just in the same direction, in the opposite direction. All those things are all in the same negative direction, whereas all the positive things are all in the same positive direction. So you don't even have to know specifically what you want, because they're all still... Either you go into the positive direction, and all those great things are there, or you're going into the negative direction, and all those bad things are there. So, spoke my piece. That's my experience. That's what I've gone through. And that's the incredible, incredible experience that I've had. And every other sober person that I know that's really made the commitment to do it and, and stick it out. You know, you have to just have that awareness that... In order for it to get good, it has to suck. You have to have that void. You have to feel 
that emptiness and that awareness that you don't have what you want in order to be able to use that fuel of inspiration and creativity and desire and ambition and hunger and you just take off after that connect with everyone around you you have a perspective of appreciating all their hard work and all of their desires and you start seeing how you can be of service to help other people and it feels good to have those skills and those powers and see in people's eyes their appreciation and their admiration and their excitement it's all a drug but you can't have both you can't have drug and alcohol drugs and life success drugs to any full amount if you drink and do a little drugs here and there then you can succeed a little bit at work and stuff but if you're like me and you're an overachiever you want all of it so you can have either or you can be a hardcore junkie and just get high and ripped up every day and enjoy it and go nowhere in life. Or you can get obsessed with however you define success. And every day just live and breathe it. Making a better life for your family. Making a better life for yourself. Making a better life for lots of people that work for you in a company making a better life for all the people that are your customers and your associates and your partners and making a better life for all the people that then start to depend on you and love you and appreciate you. It's a totally different addiction. Same definition, same kind of addiction. But a completely different result. So you just gotta choose.